Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Devin. Today we'll be doing some gouache and colored pencil portraits. But first I wanted to show you this visitor we had. She's so beautiful, and I think she's walking very carefully so she doesn't slip on the ice. <laughs> it was very surprising to see her that close to my house, and she stuck around for a little while too. I think I happened to throw some old produce <laughs> out front. Uh, for the deer to enjoy so it doesn't get wasted and she must have taken advantage of that We do have quite a bit of deer in our backyard and uh, it was a very nice Nice thing to see her that day speaking of wild animals. There's Lupin and Luna My little studio assistants and there she goes back into the woods She's so beautiful. I love seeing all the wildlife here but anyways, back to the painting. So I'm using a mixture of watercolor and gouache. I uh, did a really light watercolor wash on the paper. You saw that earlier, like that burnt sienna color. Um, and I'm just using a basic palette for this of yellow, red, blue, and a black and a white. I had a lot of fun sketching these, especially the male portrait. He was so much fun to draw. I just went in with a light wash of gouache i like to map out the color zones and the basic colors and values and then i like to go back in later with colored pencil on top i'm using a mixture of m graham and windsor and newton paints i definitely need to restock <laughs> i i'm running really low and actually the blue that i had was not ideal it was very very bright and saturated it worked for what I needed it to do, but for future reference, I would really like to get an ultramarine. Um, but I had so much fun painting this, and this sketchbook really held up well. This Again, this is the Leuchtturm square sketchbook. I don't think it really has any other special name to it. I think it's the 1917 square sketchbook, but it's so much fun to use. I love the paper. I'll definitely be repurchasing this. I know I said that last video, but this is so much fun. So I'm just going in with some really delicate lines, and I'm doing a lot of cross-hatching. I like to use cross-hatching, especially with gouache, because it makes it easier to blend everything later on. I also make it known that I go a little bit darker. Like I, I try to put a lot of effort into going darker with my values. Just because I feel like gouache lightens up quite a bit and it's very easy to go light instead of dark over these values and over this medium. So so I am quite happy with the way that these turned out. I definitely think he turned out much better than she did, um, but I still had a lot of fun painting this. I've just been trying to let loose with my work and really just enjoy what I'm painting or drawing at the moment. I don't necessarily worry about the subject or try and nitpick as to the portrait reference that I'm going to use. I just really try to enjoy the process. So after all of my colored pencils are picked out, I go ahead and I start usually with the darkest shade. I like to start with the darkest points because it really helps frame the rest of the video, I guess. It, it helps me build up the rest of the values and the rest of the colors. And if I get my darkest darks in there, it's easier for me to see, well, it needs a little bit more red. It needs a little bit more green. It could be anyway but it really helps me to see what direction i need to go in for my skin tones and i'm using a variety of colors i'm using like a bright orange a green blue especially like around his chin i use a lot of blue there because he likely has a lot of stubble there or it may just be closer to the bone if you notice if you look at like the skin around your eyebrows and underneath your eyebrows 
that tends to be a little bit on the bluer sometimes the yellower side whereas if you look at the skin closer to your nose your ears and like the apples of your cheeks that's usually a little bit more red and i learned that from my classes with the watts atelier a long 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 time ago <laughs> but i like to build up my colors like that so then it's really subtle and really easy for me to go ahead and adjust them if needed I decided to go with a blue background for him because it felt like it would push the warmth of his skin tone forward and would really pop the warmth and the color of the background would help push that forward, if that makes sense. Um, as you can see, the color of the background and his skin tone actually are very similar. I did not put a lot of layers down. I just went very subtle with the gouache and the colored pencil and really just worked with the background and used it to my the best of my ability and used it to my advantage so when i go in and i put that light blue in the background it really makes his skin tone pop and it makes him look very warm it, it makes his skin tone look nice and warm which is really what i wanted and it's not at all like the reference picture the reference picture really didn't have a lot to go by and really didn't have a lot of contrast so i kind of played that up a little bit another thing i've been trying to work on is not being so tied to the reference photo i used to put a lot of value on getting my drawing to look as realistic as possible and while i think that has really helped me in my development especially with portraits it's really kind of been a crutch in a way or a hindrance of some sort like it really set me back, I feel like. So I've just been trying to focus on getting a likeness. It doesn't necessarily have to be an exact match. And it really helps bring the stress level down a little bit. And I've really started to fall back in love with drawing and painting again, just because I don't have that on, you know, in the back of my mind. It doesn't have to be perfect. So just like the previous portraits, I'm going in with the darkest values. This for her just happens to be the pupils and iris as well as probably the corners of her mouth if I remember correctly. The bottom part of her eyebrows, usually that's for most people that's going to be the darkest parts of the face, maybe the nostrils and bits and pieces of the hair. Um, Again, I just like to go in with the darkest first, and I know that that's kind of controversial. Not everybody likes to work that way, but it really helps to anchor the portrait and really helps to get a solid foundation, in my opinion. These portraits were so much fun to work on. I love portrait work, and I feel like I jump around so much with so many different subjects and so many different mediums, but... You know, sometimes you're in the mood for a gouache painting and sometimes you're in the mood for a ballpoint pen drawing and that's just all there is to it. I do wish I had a little bit more consistency, but it's just the way that it works <laughs> where I have very, multiple mediums that I really appreciate in very different reasons. But I'm sorry if you can hear my dog chewing in the background. She has found a bone and decided <laughs> that now is the opportune moment to chew on that bone. But she's too cute. I can't take it away from her now. She's been really good today, so I guess she deserves it. <laughs> but same as the last portrait. Actually, this one I didn't go in as heavy with the gouache. I... I don't know, sometimes I like to start out with gouache and then I just finish everything else with colored pencil. I love colored pencils. They are hands down one of my favorite mediums of all time. They're so versatile. They look so good on paper and I just have so much fun with them. They're a medium that I have 
used since the beginning of time. I mean, I remember being little and going camping and my mom and dad would always get me this new set of colored pencils or crayons with uh, new colored um, coloring books. There's the word. And I remember I would have like a ton of different coloring books and I'd be sitting around the campfire and I would be drawing with my new colored pencils and it, it's very nostalgic and I, I love colored pencils so much. So this hair posed a very interesting but very fun challenge. I don't like drawing and painting hair. I don't know why I chose this portrait, <laughs> but I am glad that I did. Um, I just have never previously liked drawing hair and this has there's so much texture to this hair there's so much going on but it's so beautiful and I think that's part of the reason why I chose it I think I kind of needed a little bit of a kick in the butt and a little bit of a challenge so um yeah it was so much fun and honestly I left the majority of it oh Mr. Lupin there's no need for grumbles Anyways, what were we talking about before Mr. Lupin so rudely interrupted us? Oh, her hair. Um, I left the highlights that you see, that you'll see later. It's actually just the color of the paper behind the, you know, the, the toned paper that I had initially done. So when you see that, keep that in mind because that's also the color of his flesh tone for the most part. And it's just very interesting how two colors that are very similar look very different based on their surroundings. Something that I've struggled with since the beginning of time is color and color theory. I struggle in every way and I think that's why I like colored pencils so much because I can layer as many layers as I need to and if I don't like it then I can just go over with a light tone of gouache and then go back over it with colored pencil and I really do struggle with color and I, I truly don't know why I have a million books that I just really have to study this year and maybe I'll make that a goal and maybe I'll make it a series or something here on YouTube so you guys can follow along with me because color is something that I I really have a hard time with I I don't know it's just comparing the color to what I need and it's I don't know it's a mess <laughs> it really baffles me in every way. Well guys, I think we're pretty close to the end. Only a couple minutes left. I hope that you enjoy this video. I've been really trying to be more consistent and I know this video was a couple days later but I had some strug struggles with my computer not cooperating with me but I figured out. I'm so excited to be making more content for you guys and making it more consistent. I'm having so much fun with this, and I'm actually really starting to enjoy the editing process. Um, but I will let you guys go. Enjoy the rest of the video, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.